when I heard the song, my thought was really not a romantic song. It wasn't about somebody else. It wasn't about, you know, you do this for me. It was more about me doing it for me. You know, give me more love than I've ever had. It's about, I, looked, I thought of it about myself, reflecting on myself, not unlike what Julio was talking about. If I'm gonna look at my image, what do I see? You know, if I'm going to reflect, this whole month is a bit about reflection. If I'm going to be reflecting, very often we reflect on things, events, our careers, our love relationships, our health. We reflect on so many things, but what about the overall me looking at myself? Brene Brown says this, owning our story and loving ourselves through the process is the bravest thing that we'll ever do. So every person here has a story, don't you? I know you do, because you tell them to me. <laughs> we all tell each other our stories. When we meet people, they tell us their story, yes? And, and you tell yours. Go to any party. I was at a 70th birthday party last night. There were stories flying all over the room, right? That's who we are. We tell our stories. But the question is, are you okay with your story? Upon reflection, are you able to look at your life, your whole story, and be good with it? Really good with it. Do you ever hear yourself telling the same story over and over and over and over again? You're not good with it. You're not good with that story. Do you have something that kind of defines you, that talks about, like something, maybe something horrible that happened to you in your childhood or, or in your early adulthood or something you didn't get that you should have gotten? as if, right? And you can sit continually tell that story. Well, you're not okay with that. So the whole point of this idea of loving oneself and loving our story, and as, as Brene Brown says, being not only being okay with it, but actually have love our story. The good, the bad, and the ugly, all of it. Being okay with that disappointment. Being okay with that person that, that did us wrong. How many of you have ever had anybody do you wrong? <laughs> it's kind of hard to get through, <laughs> it's kind of hard to get through life without being done wrong at some point. But it gives you so many lyrics for songwriting. <laughs> I mean, think about most of our music. Most of our music is very depressing, right? And they're the ones that we love to listen to. I remember when I lived on West 87th Street in New York City and I was only a young actor, I would sit there and listen to Melissa Manchester sing, you know, don't cry out loud, you know, and, and uh, um, uh, I'd rather leave while I'm in love. Do you remember that song? I'd rather leave while I'm in love. I never did. I stayed way too long at the fair. Another song. Right? So that, that's what we, we, we get into, but are we okay with it? So a, who said no? <laughs> we'll talk. So, <laughs> so, so what I wanna, want you to do today, I'm going to have a lot of questions for you. I'd like you to answer them for yourself and think about them. This is reflection month. Reflect on those things that give you trouble. Reflect on those things that are still coming up that you still have to tell somebody that this happened to me. Why? Why do we have to keep reliving these things? This happened to me. Well, guess what? It did happen to you, and it's a part of who you are. All of it. All of it's a part of who you are. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Have you ever been cornered by somebody telling you a really horrific story of what happened to them in their life? And, and, you're, <laughs> and your head's about to explode? And, and you, and you want to love them, and you want to help them, but there's a part of you that wants to just go all Bob Newhart on them and just go, stop it and slap them. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, 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 that video, you gotta go watch it. Just put in Bob Newhart, stop it. He plays a therapist. And every time somebody says something to him, he goes, well, stop it. <laughs> this, person, this person says, I, I'm so scared. I, I, I'm so afraid I'm gonna be buried alive. And he's like, well, stop it. <laughs> and then she makes him so annoyed at the end of it, he, at the end of this long therapy session, he says to her, I'm telling you the whole thing, you don't have to watch it now. Uh, at the end of the whole therapy session, he's been saying, stop it the whole time. I feel like I want to just, you know, run and hide. Stop it. And finally, at the end, he's just goes like, stop it or I'll bury you in a coffin. <laughs> That's certainly the way I counsel. Um, so owning our... St <laughs> owning 
That's religious science counseling. <laughs> you put it there, move it, <laughs> right? So owning our story and loving it is what Brene Brown says. Owning our story and loving it. I have to tell you, in this room right now, all the people in this room right now, everyone that's watching online, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, none of us love ourselves enough. None of us love ourselves enough because enough means 100%. Love only. If I am loving only and I have forgiven everything, there can be nothing in my life that, no, that, that, that throws me. There can be nothing in my life that I'm still trying to like get over. My teacher, Dr. Walker, he would always say to you if you were having an issue and you told it to him too many times, he'd be like, get over it, Blanche. <laughs> and I always thought he meant Blanche Dubois from, from Tennessee Williams, but he didn't. He meant Blanche from Golden Girls. <laughs> so, you know, what is it in your life? What do you need to really reflect on in order to start loving it? And I mean loving it, not just getting over it, but loving it. Buddha said, you yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. You yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. So there's a word in there that I wanted to deal with today, which is deserve. Deserve. Do you deserve to love yourself? Do you know how many people say to me, I have no problem loving other people, but I have a problem loving myself? Well, that's actually not true. Because until you can love yourself, you don't have the capacity to love other people. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what you're really doing is loving other people so that they can love you back in order to fulfill the love you're not giving yourself. That's what we've really found out in all of these years of psychology. So do you deserve to love yourself? Often your story stops you from loving yourself because you know why you shouldn't love yourself. You know who you've been. Anybody have a checkered past in this room? I know you do, Kirby. You do? Okay, good. I know you do. I've heard, I've, yeah. I have a checkered past, surprisingly enough. I do, and if I go back and, and look at it, but you know what, I, I'm gonna stand right here and say, I am not ashamed, embarrassed, or, or, or I'll use those two words, ashamed or embarrassed of anything I've done in my life. When my father died, <clears throat> the, day my fa the day my father died, I was, at his, I was at his house with my kids and my husband. We were just visiting, and we knew he was passing, but like six months they had given him. And we were with him, and when I said to him, and, and it was not in a good way I said this to him, but I looked at him and I said, Dad, is there anything you'd like to share with me that you'd like to really think about? Anything you wish you had done differently or better? I was looking for him to say, I wish I'd have been a better father. But those words were not forthcoming. And he looked right at me and he said, actually, I don't regret anything and I think I've done everything the best I could have done it. Now, my answer to that, in that moment of my younger self, although I was already a minister, I said, I looked at him and I went, really? <laughs> I re that, that's all I could think of to say. I was like, really? And he was like, yup. I was like, okay, I'll see you next month. And I left. And then as we got to uh, New York, I was speaking, I was the guest speaker at Unity in New York City the next morning. We're driving into New York. My stepmother called and said that he had passed in his sleep that night. And I was like, I was like, oh, wow. But I still gave my talk at Unity. The minister said, do you want to? I said, yeah, I'm good. The title of my talk was, You Can't Stop the Beat. I want you to see the irony there. <laughs> and um, I gave it. It wasn't until years later, in a workshop, teaching a workshop, where all of a sudden, and I don't know, some of you may have been in that workshop, but you wouldn't know this happened to me. I just got so, I had to stop. I got all overwhelmed because I suddenly realized he had the right answer. That is the perfect answer. I don't regret anything. I did my best with everything. I'm good to go. That's what I'm looking for us to look at today. Where are you still thinking you're not good to go? Where are you still thinking you've got to fix this? How many of you are still trying to bring some junk 
into the present from the past in order to fix it. You will never fix it because it's in the past. Hakuna Matata. It's in the past. It's not here. What's here is your memory of it, your mind, your consciousness, your agonizing continuance of bringing it into the present. Let it go, Blanche. <laughs> so, are you deserving of your love? The answer is yes. And frankly, you're deserving, and this is one of my quotes, I deserve it all, not because of what I do, but because of who I am. You need to know that you're deserving, not because of what you did, because frankly, if you're really only deserving based on what you did, then you've got a problem. Because most of us are going to fluctuate with our deserving factor. Sometimes I'm deserving and sometimes I'm not. Does that mean when I'm like a real ass? Anybody ever be a real ass in this room? Right? Thank you, Lindy. <laughs> Although you made it kind of small. <laughs> you were a small ass. <laughs> yes. So, so, right, suddenly I'm not deserving because of my behavior. No, that's not the case. That's not the case. Now, the truth is, your behavior is going to bring forth whatever experience comes from that behavior. That's true. You're going to act like an ass. The world is going to act like an ass right back at you. And I think ass is still a spiritual word, right? So that's the way it works. But does that mean suddenly you're not deserving of your love? Absolutely not. Every person is deserving not because of what they do, but because of who they are. And who are you? That's really, thank you. God is the answer. Who are you? You are an expression of God. You are the entire ocean in a drop. But, and here's the thing about this. Yes, you are God, but what are you doing with it? What, how are you expressing it? How are you living? What level of God are you living at? So, the lyrics. Uh, one, two, three, four by the plain white tees. Um, did I ever say my talk title? I don't think I did. The title of my talk today is, What Do I Think of Me? What Do I See? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it is, What Do I See? <laughs> what Do I Think of Me is be after What Do I See? So, so, see that little lens there? That's your mind. And the reason why I love that uh, Sandy came up with this, when she sent it to me, I got it right away. I wanted to use it. Your mind is like a lens. What's behind the lens is that which is looking through it, the person, you. How you look through that lens is what matters. That person can take that lens and see any picture it wants to see, yes? You aim your mind at everything the way you want to aim your mind because you are who you are, because you believe what you believe about yourself. And if you think of yourself as a sad person or a person that hasn't made it yet or any, any negatives that you add to yourself, I'm too old, I should have done this then, should have, would have, could have, all of that, that's the person looking through the lens and they're the things you're going to focus on. Because that's what you're willing to see. Because that's who you know yourself to be. But that's not who you are. You are God. You're able and capable to look at anything at any time, irregardless. So the question I have for you today is, how much of who you are do you love? And the answer has to be all of it. And yet, within loving all of it, you still have the capacity and the capability to point to any one thing and say, I'm willing to love that out of my life. Because the love is what allows it to go. Resentment, anger, hurt, all of the stuff we hold on to, we hold on to it. And even though we're saying we're letting it go, the anger and the resentment and the hurt or whatever it is, is holding it in place. You can forget about it for a while, but it's right here. It's part of your core beliefs. But if you're willing to love it away and say, you know what? I see you. I see what you are, I see what I did, I see how that happened, I see how that person did what that person did, I see how I did what I did, I see it all, and I get it, love only. Now it will go away, because it's fine now. Now it's all okay. Now you have the capacity to actually stand in yourself and say, I'm good to go, good to go. So, 
The lyrics, give me more loving than I've ever had. Make it all better when I'm feeling sad. Tell me I'm special even when I think I'm not. Do you do that for yourself? That's what I was thinking of on that treadmill. I was, especially this line. Tell me I'm special even when I think I'm not. Do you have the capacity to know who you are even when you're forgetting who you are? That's a biggie. It's kind of like being all prayed up. You know, there are moments when I forget who I am, like yesterday. But I'm so prayed up that even when I forget who I am for a moment, everything within me comes raging at me saying, wait a minute, here's who you really are. And, and, and the time it takes me to get back on track is shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. So are you talking to yourself in such a way that you can tell yourself, I know who you are even though you think this. You may think this about yourself, but I know the truth. For you to talk to yourself that way. Not find someone who can do it for you, although if you can't, then find someone who can do it for you. But to talk to yourself in such a way that you make yourself special, make yourself be the person that you truly are. That's why I love these lyrics so much. Tell me that I'm special even when I think I'm not. Make me feel good when I hurt so bad. I'm so glad I found you. Have you? Have you found yourself yet? How, how many people have been coming here for at least a year? Two years. Three years. Four years. Five years. Six years. <laughs> Ten years. Twenty years. Your hands should go down. I didn't start till 15 years ago. Um, but you've been at this center for 20 years, right? So, so, so the question is, how long is it going to take for us to find ourselves? The reason why we come here, it's interesting. Somebody said to me last night at the party, they said, I watch you every Sunday, and I think there's going to come a time when church as we know it is no longer going to be needed because he said, if, if everybody just gets what you're saying on Sundays, they're not going to need you anymore. Who's saying yup so loud, right? <laughs> I'm still showing up. <laughs> but it's true. Really, my job is to become antiquated. My job is to no longer be necessary. Because if we all got it, who we were, would we need to come and be told who we are? No, but it's going to morph. It's just going to change. It's just going to be an experiential for community to come together and celebrate who they are, which is really what I consider this, although we're still in a little bit of a learning curve. But we come together on Sunday because you are sitting in a room with everybody who when they walk up to you, like if, if I walked up to you and just said, good morning, God, you wouldn't think I was crazy, would you? No. And, but if I did it at Starbucks, <laughs> 5150, gone. <laughs> Seriously. For those of you who don't know what a 5150 is, it's where they take you off the street and put you somewhere until you get it together. <laughs> right. Right? So, so, but we get it. All of us get it, yes? Right. So what's it going to take us to finally know who we are so that nothing that in, in our lives stops us? Nothing in our lives holds us back. Give me more loving from the very start. From the beginning. Don't wait till the second, third, fourth, or fifth thought. Start at the beginning. I know who I am, and I love who I am. Period, end of sentence. So, um, I love this last line. Make it, make it feel good when I hurt so bad. I'm so glad I found you. I love being around you. So here's a big question. How many of you like being around yourselves? Greg, you didn't raise your hand. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> I noticed Josie did, but you didn't. Uh, so, like being around yourself. Now, here's how you find out if you're really worth being around. Ask your friends <laughs> if they like being around you, right? Like, do you like being around me, Martha? Yeah. What are you going to say, no? <laughs> I like being, there are people in this room I like being around. You didn't get that? <laughs> that would imply there are people I don't like being around, which is not true. I don't think. I'd have to think about it. But the question really is, do you like being around you? Have you ever been in a moment where you just wish you weren't around yourself? <laughs> Trust me, everyone feels the same way about you. If you feel that way, think about it. 
If you feel like, God, I, God, I hate myself right now, trust me, someone around you is thinking the same thing. So how are we going to like ourselves enough, love ourselves enough to want to be around ourselves? Well, it really all boils down to knowing who we are. Um, is there something about you? Now, here's a, take a deep breath because I just want you to let whatever answer comes up, comes up, come up. Is there something about you, something that you know and you're not willing to address? What's going on in your life? What thing? What belief? What idea? What person? Whatever it is. Is there something that you know right now you are not addressing, you're not willing to address, and you don't, kinda, you don't seem to be addressing it? Well, whatever that may be, if you've found something, whatever that may be, the only reason you're not addressing it is because you don't love yourself enough. That's the only reason. If you loved yourself 100%, there'd be nothing that you would be afraid of or you would not be procrastinative. You would not procrastinate when it comes to addressing something and moving it along. We cannot underestimate how powerful self-love is. So M. Scott Peck said this, until you value yourself, you won't value your time. Until you value your time, you won't do anything with it. Think about that. Until you value yourself, you won't value your time. And until you value your time, you won't do anything with it. So where do you place value in your life? And I know I've said this before, but many people are placing value on things that don't give value to their lives. Things don't give us value. It's just fun to have them. What do you value in your life? And more importantly, are you actually living it? Are you doing it? I mean... I've heard so many people tell me, you know, I just, I would love to do this with my life. Then why aren't you doing this with your life? Well, I won't make any money at it. So what are you making money at? Oh, I hate my job. It's like, oh my God, you know, how many years do you have left on this planet to feel that way? What do you value? What do you value in life? There's an exercise in practitioner class we have to do all your values. And I watch most of the students are str struggle through that. What do I value? Well, I sort of value this. We need to start knowing. What do I value in life? Do I value my creative expression? I do. I value private time to create. When I was on the, on the, on the uh, houseboat, I spent every morning rewriting my book that I'm trying to finish. No, I'm not trying to finish it, that I'm finishing. I have two chapters left. And I loved it. It's like the time flew by. They went out to water ski. I started writing, and it was like two seconds later, they were back from water skiing. And I know that it wasn't two seconds later. It was like three, two hours, three hours later. So what do you value so much that time evaporates, and you are just floating on that creative energy that you are? What is it? You should be doing it, no matter what. Because if you're not, you don't love yourself enough. Somewhere along the line, you're withholding love from yourself. And this thing that I learned as a young Catholic boy growing up, that, de that delaying gratification was a good thing, it is not. Gratification, love, success, all of it is not to be delayed. It is to be lived every single moment. So there's no reason for you to hold back on what it is you know is yours to do. And, and, and I don't think there is any reason, any reason that will really hold up in the face of, do I love myself enough to do this? So, my last quote is one of my favorite people, Lucille Ball. She said, love yourself first and everything else falls into line. You really have to love yourself to get anything done in this world. And um, I don't know if you know it, but I got to spend some time with Lucio Ball. And uh, I was uh, doing a show with her daughter. And her daughter asked me to be Lucy's uh, assistant during, during the time she was in Miami. So I was. <laughs> Scary, because, you know, you should never meet your heroes. <laughs> because um, I didn't know that Lucio Ball. On TV, it's I Love Lucy. In life, she had a mouth on her like a sailor. 
and she was just like, and, and at that point in her life, she like, she spoke really rough. It was like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. I was like, <laughs> could you just do a pratfall so I know who you are? <laughs> Um, and she was amazing. She really was amazing. But I will tell you this. That woman was so clear. I mean, so clear, so concise, so sure of herself, so confident. She'd walk into a room and she was just, I mean, she was Lucille Ball, of course. But she wasn't always, I love Lucy. She started out somewhere and she ended up here as this confident, strong, powerful first woman to own a movie studio. I mean, she was amazing, an amazing woman. So I listen to her when she says, love yourself first and everything else falls into line. You really have to love yourself to get anything done in this world. You want, how many people here have things they want to get done in the world? Right? Okay. What if I were to tell you that the only thing you have to do is love yourself and that will happen? Because that's actually what I'm telling you. If you love yourself 100%, hook, line, and sinker, nothing from the past throws me on this. Nothing from the future throws me on this. Standing in my body, I love me right here, right now, all of my talents, everything I've done, every success, every failure, every idea, every idea that maybe I'm not going to do, all of it. I love it all. There's an energy in that that just makes me want to go do it. Whatever it is, do it flying on the energy of love. So I think it's important for us to reflect on this idea. Do I love myself enough? Do I love me? All of me. All of me. So last night at the party, someone said to me, um, same person actually, said to me, uh, so what are you going to do with the third act of your life? <laughs> I said, well, I'm turning 65 in a month, so clearly I'm in it. And he says, no, really, no, no, you're not in your third act. Doesn't your third act? And I said, you know what? I have my acts all planned out. I know what they are. And by the way, there are not three acts. There are four acts in my life. And so this morning, I wrote them down just to be clear. So here are the four acts. You can join me in this, or you can go back to the three-act version, whatever you like. But for me, act one is 1 to 25, years 1 to 25, and I call it my developmental years. Anybody else? Does that sound good? We develop. By around 25, at least in a male, male brain, apparently. Females go a little earlier, apparently. Males take to about 25 to mature. So from 1 to 25, although with my son, well, I won't go there. Uh, <laughs> he may need till 30 at this point. Uh, he's watching today in Texas, um, so <laughs> unless he just clicked it off. Uh, <laughs> Or his roommates are saying, no, turn it back on. I want to hear what he says about you. <laughs> so um, 1 to 25, the developmental years. Now, interestingly enough, I used 25 because 25 is where I got my first big Broadway show. And I'm bringing that up because the star of that Broadway show, and I don't know if, uh, how many of you know that I did a show called West Side Story. Uh, that's only a joke because I say it apparently too many times. Um, but, but, yeah. <laughs> And that was good. That's a long talk. I haven't said it today. Um, yeah, it was good. So um, the star of that show, two-time Tony nominee, is actually here today, the woman who played Maria in West Side Story, Josie de Guzman. So would you stand let them applaud? And how funny. Last night... Uh, one of her co-stars, Brent Barrett, who played opposite her, who played Tony, texted me a picture of himself as Miss Hannigan in Annie. <laughs> He's in Vegas playing Miss ha Hannigan. And I was like, and, and his text came in right after yours, so I had you and his right next to each other. I was like, oh my God, it's like, anyway, 1 to 25 <laughs> is the developmental years. Then I call 25 to 50 the crazy years. 25 to 50. Now, what I mean by crazy years, not that I was crazy, but that, but that everything, I just did anything I wanted to do. It was like crazy energy. You know what I mean? Where you're just out there doing it and being crazy and getting married and having children and buying theaters. Now, as far as buying theaters are concerned, then I go 50 to 80, which I call the focused years. At 50, I became a minister, or I became a minister at 
48, right? And then we bought a theater and I opened a church and got more focused with my life. And I feel more focused. So from 50 to 80, I consider that the focused spiritual years where I'm getting clear, I know who I am, I love myself, and now I can do anything. And I'm like so busy doing 20,000 different ideas and it's very exciting, but focused. Not just crazy, focused. So the crazy years were the build up to the focus. So I now focus the crazy. So that's 50 to 80. Then, and this is where most of us are, the 80 plus years I call being. Just being. Right? Nancy, that's where you are. Yes. Just, that's where you are, Joe. You're just being, right? So you take all the, all of the developmental years, you go into all the crazy years, you focus it all up, and then you get to be. There's my whole life. So I'm telling this guy, and I was like, so the being years, he says, oh, okay, so you really think it's going to be till 80 to you in the being years? I said, I'm being, I'm being careful with that, actually, because I actually think it could be 85, 90. Or maybe it could be 100. All of a sudden at 100, I say, I got to just be. <sighs> or I may have already slid into home and wasted it all, used it all. That's what I want. But none of that's going to happen if I'm not willing to love myself. So upon re reflection, what you think about you will direct the course of your life. You want success? You want to be able to do what you know is your, in your heart to do? It's not about the opportunities. It's not about are the right people surrounding you to make it happen. It's do you love yourself enough to do it? Do you love yourself enough to do what is yours to do, to do all the things in your life that you feel are yours to do? So I'm going to ask you this week, what do you think about you? What do you see when you look at you? Reflect on that. Look at it. Give yourself the gift of loving it no matter what. Love all of you. And if there's something you don't particularly like, that's okay. You can still love and maybe not like something, but you've got to love it. Love it enough to know that you don't necessarily want it. Move it along with love. I always say, treat for the highest and furthest for whatever you don't want. And then with that love, I guarantee you, if you're willing to reflect on all of you, see what you see, decide what you like, move it along if you don't, you're going to notice that whatever act of life you are in, and most of us are in the focused act of life, for those of you that are still in developmental, and for those of you, I have to find those who are the crazy, um, or what's the second one? Yeah, crazy. Um, just have fun with it. If you love yourself fully, totally, you are going to have the most crazy adventure. You're going to have the most wonderful time doing what is yours to do, and you're going to love doing it. So as you go through your week, be willing to look in the mirror. Take a look at yourself. Don't fall into it. Don't fall into anything you see that you don't like. Just say, I love you. One, two, three. It's as simple as that. I love you no matter what. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs>